Welcome to Electron Lecture Online. This playlist is going to deal with vectors and lines in three-dimensional space. We're going to take a closer look at what those equations look like, how they were derived, and what we can do with them. Such as, for example, find the distance or the shortest distance between two lines in space. So to do that, let's familiarize ourselves a little bit with vector and vector notation. And here what we're going to do is we're going to find the velocity vector given a position vector. We'll do it in two dimensions so that it's easier to graph it as well and see what that looks like. But of course that extrapolates out to three dimensions as well. So here's the position vector given to us in terms of time as a, as a function of time. And so now we're going to find the velocity vector. So that means we're going to take the derivative of the position vector with respect to time. So that means the velocity vector with respect to time is equal to the derivative of this, which is 12 times t in the i direction, and here that would be 3 thirds, which is 1 times t squared, so plus t squared in the j direction. So what does that mean? What does a position vector like that mean, and what does a velocity vector like this mean? The best thing to do is to graph it for a few values of t. For example, let's evaluate the position vector when t is equal to 0 t is equal to 0, we get 14i and then plus 0j. So in other words, that means we're 14 units to the right in the x direction and 0 units upward in the uh, j direction or in the y direction. So let's say that's right here. That means from the origin we have a vector that points to this point right there when t is equal to 0. Now what's the position when t is equal to 1? So again, we take the position vector when t is equal to 1, and then we plug in a 1 there, so we get 6 plus 14, which is 20i, plus plug in a 1 there, and we get 1 third j. So that means that our next point when t is equal to 1 is 20 units in this direction and just a very small distance in this direction. So now we have a new position vector like this. That's where t is equal to 1. Let's do it again for a couple more uh, uh, values for t. So the position vector for t is equal to 2 is equal to, that would be 4 times 6, which is 24 plus 14, that's 38. So 38i plus 2 cubed, that's 8, that's 8 thirds, that's almost 3, 8 thirds j. And so you can see then that we're much further out and a little bit further up. So that would be our next position vector like this when t is equal to 2. Let's do it for one more value. So the position vector when t is equal to 3. So 3, that's 9 times 6, that's 54, 64, that's 68i. That would be 27 divided by 3, it would be plus 9j. So then you see you're much further out this way, a little bit up this way, and it's not quite to scale, but I think you have a fairly good feel for how the position changes. With other words, at t equals 0, we're over here. And you can see that our position in two-dimensional space changes according to this dotted line right here, and we get snapshot positions at various periods of time. All right, next we're going to do the same thing for the velocity vector. So the velocity vector, when t is equal to 0, is equal to, that becomes 0, that becomes 0, so it would be 0 in the i direction plus 0 in the j direction. In other words, we're not moving at all. This simply means that we're stationary, there's no velocity at time equals 0, and so we have our velocity vector, and we might as well put out the origin. Remember, we can put the vector anywhere we like. We cannot do that with the position vector because the position vector always starts at the origin, but the velocity vector can be placed anywhere we like. For example, we could put the velocity vector here at our position, and there would be zero length to that velocity vector at that point. So this would be t equals 0. All right, let's now find the velocity when t is equal to 1. And let's see, that gives us 12 plus 1j, so 12i plus 1j. So now our next velocity vector would be 12 in this direction, 1 in that direction, so that means we would be moving relative to this, whoop, well, it should be a straight line, there we go. So that would be at t equals to 1. 
So if we go back to our position vector, notice that t equals 0 we're here, at t equals 1 we're there, so you can see that the velocity vector kind of mirrors the change in position from t equals 0 to t equals 1, which is kind of what we'd expect. So at t equals 1, we're moving in this direction, and so that would be appropriate. We see this vector here, and you can see that would land us pretty well at our next position. Kind of, because of course the velocity vector changes as time goes by. This is just a simply snapshot position when t is equal to 1. Let me give you an arrow like that, because that's the vector that belongs to t equals to 1. So now velocity, when t is equal to 2, is equal to 24 plus 4. So 24i plus 4j. And so now our next vector would kind of look like this. Like, so that would be for t is equal to 2. And remember, if we take that and plug it here, you can see that that vector would get us from this point to that point. Remember, I didn't quite draw it to scale. This is a little bit longer than it should be relative to that, but it gives us the feel that, yes, if we're over here, t equals 2, and there at t equals to 3, you can see that this velocity vector points in that direction. It'll get us to our new position. Let's do one more. Velocity when t is equal to 3 is equal to, that would be 36 in the i direction, plus 9 in the j direction. And notice our vectors become longer, and we start getting more of a significant component, t equal to 3. We get more of a significant component in the y direction, so it looks like our velocity is going like this, and that is along, that, is, that mirrors the position vector changes, so you can see that as our velocity changes, we go faster and faster and faster and start curving up into the y direction. So that gives us a good feel for what the position vector is, what the velocity vector is, and how we evaluate it for different values for t. And it looks like we can see the correlation between the position and the velocity vectors. And that is how it's done.